to try and do a review on this showy GTR 2 helmet which I've had for a couple of months now so I've had a decent chance to use it in my day-to-day -day commuting and riding around on weekends and honestly it doesn't quite live up to the hype um, and the reviews that I've read about this helmet so maybe starting with the good points I really like the look of this specific helmet this is the Lucky Charms colorway which naturally was unavailable in the UK and I had to order from Lewis Moto in Germany I believe um, for about 500 pounds me just had to rally onto the pavement to get out of the way of that ambulance anyway where was I so yeah what I'd read online the GTR 2 was a decent uh, sport touring helmet good ventilation good comfort incredibly quiet internal sun visor which ticked all the boxes for me in reality though um, the biggest letdown well two big letdowns for me the fact that people who were saying it was a quiet helmet I've not found that at all it's been as loud as my shark squall and if anyone's used that helmet they'll know that's fairly noisy I have well I did some reading and apparently a lot of it can be because of the base plates for the visor on this helmet which you can adjust so um, there's two screws on either side that you can um, push down and forwards or back and up to adjust how the visor meets the seal um, which might have something to do with it I've attempted to adjust the visor myself and it doesn't seem to really improve the noise element so much so that's the first problem is the noise after reading online from multiple sources that it was a really silent helmet I've not found that at all the other really annoying thing also visor based I was riding to work one day and it started hammering it down with rain and water was just splashing in my face um, which obviously isn't ideal especially when you've got your visor down uh, granted it was raining quite heavily but in the five or so years that I've had my shark I never had water pissing into my face whilst riding in the rain so um, I wasn't too impressed with that I do actually like the helmet it, it looks good it's comfortable it's got a nice plush lining it's very aerodynamic so there's not as much buffeting on my head as there used to be with my shark the ventilation I find is a lot better than the shark um, the viewport's probably about the same as my shark it's not as wide as something like an LS2 Arrow R chin strap it's micrometric which is a step away from the usual showy D-ring <coughs> but it's frigging tight so that when I first got this helmet it felt like the, I was being garroted it, was, it needed a, quite a lot of adjustment the chin strap is very tight and it doesn't quite feel like it's in the correct position it feels like it maybe needs to be a bit further forward so yeah the visor and the chin strap are the two parts of this helmet that I don't like it's not quite a deal breaker I, after initially getting a face full of water on that day um, a couple of weeks into having the helmet I did adjust it and it didn't seem to happen again I think I've read online other people saying that they've uh, received an unexpected shower through the visor on their GTR 2s as well 
the whole GTR2 range in terms of colorways is pretty bland except for except for the lucky charms in my opinion <coughs> so I was pretty set on getting this helmet and when it arrived I was really happy it looks really nice there's some nice uh, pearlescent flake in the paint the detailing is nice the finish is nice nice and gloss just a shame uh, if the visor doesn't seem to be adjusted properly you get a shower if it's raining which in the UK is uh, <clears throat> quite a regular occurrence yeah, by all means it's not a perfect helmet for your money I would imagine you can get something just as good if not better also shutting the visor fully does require quite a firm shove um, for the last part of the travel when you get to there it just naturally wants to leave a crack which is quite nice if it's hot if you want to close it fully you just need to push down on it but one thing to mention is the I find the drop down sun visor mechanism a bit fiddly to work I've got used to it now but it's just a sliding tab over here it's not the easiest thing to find and I also find that when you do drop the internal visor it's steamed up so not ideal and coverage I wouldn't say is as good as the shark squall visor it's uh, got better coverage than the first generation GTR apparently but there's still a definite gap in your vision at the bottom that you can see as you're riding along so I say I think these are all things when your helmet costs 500 quid you're a bit less willing to forgive annoying things like that if this was a 200 pound helmet I would probably not be so fussed about it um, pin lock comes with a pin lock in the box that works well no problem with that in summary what would I give it probably three out of five if I had known there would be these visor issues I probably would have gone for something else I've got it and I've lived with it for a few months I do like it would I recommend it to people uh, I would find it difficult that's the purpose of this video so kind of give people a heads up on the actual what it's like to live with day to day and it is a comfortable helmet I think if you're a fair weather rider and you wear earplugs you just wouldn't have a problem if you commute all year round like I do and you need something to keep out the rain it's maybe uh, not ideal unless your visor is adjusted correctly but I'll try and um, if I get anywhere with the visor adjustments if I actually figure out how to uh, get it to be a bit quieter I'll share any developments well I hope that was useful if you've got any questions let me know I'm more than happy to reply on f what's it called YouTube's cool I hope you found that useful cheers I'll catch you on the flip-flop nice big pothole in Worthing what a beautiful town